a total surprise. This is something we have been covering now for months and months and months, and it feels like I think it's finally going to get done. You know the post office guy left over from the Trump years? I mean, nobody's ever had to know the name of the postmaster general before, right? This is a technocratic job. It has never been a high-profile job before because it has not been a controversial job before until the Trump years when we got Postmaster General Louis DeJoy, a major Trump donor, a major Republican donor with no post office experience whatsoever. Since he's been Postmaster General, he has, however, distinguished himself by, among other things, being under FBI criminal investigation for allegedly using the company he previously ran to gin up hundreds of thousands of dollars in illegal Republican campaign contributions, which, among other things, appear to have positioned him to get this postmaster job. He has also distinguished himself by maintaining personal financial investments himself with companies doing business with the post office while he's been running the post office. That doesn't seem good. He's also distinguished himself by doing everything one human could conceivably do to sabotage the actual post office so it doesn't work anymore, including ordering the irreversible physical destruction of multi-million dollar custom-built mail sorting machines. He actually came up with a plan, a 10-year plan, by which he promises he will make the post office provide fewer services and be permanently slower, and be permanently more expensive. And that's not if the plan goes wrong, that's if the plan works. This year, he's instituting a special Christmas time extra rate hike on top of the price hikes he's already pushed through. A Christmas season rate hike just for this year, to make your holiday season this year that much harder. That's on top, I should mention, of what his changes did to the post office last Christmas, when last holiday season, on-time non-local mail delivery dropped in this country to its lowest recorded performance ever, 38% on time last holiday season under Louis DeJoy. 38% on time? If you were a student, you could add 30 points to that and it would still get you an F. Louis DeJoy is like a, a little bit of boiled shrimp sewed into the hems of the curtains when the last crew left the White House. A little bit of sugar poured into the gas tank, right? A little, a little rich topsoil they carefully blended into the ground coffee before they closed up the place and handed over the keys to the Biden administration. <laughs> and the reason they were able to leave him behind, what's that smell? Is because President Biden can't fire Louis DeJoy. That's not the way the post office is structured. The White House has repeatedly made clear that they'd like to. <laughs> they think that he is not the man for the job. But the way it's structured, it's not the president who appoints that person. It's the Postal Board of Governors who hires and fires people for the postmaster job. Now, the president puts people on the Postal Board of Governors, but he can't directly do what they do. Well, today... On top of everything else that happened today in the news, today, in a surprise move, President Biden made the changes to the postal board that apparently are finally going to clear the way to getting rid of that guy. The Washington Post uh, broke the news this afternoon, explaining it in, I think, the clearest terms. They said, quote, President Biden on Friday today announced plans to nominate two new officials to the U.S. Postal Service's governing board, replacing key allies of Postmaster General Louis DeJoy. The move was a surprise to postal officials, and even to members of Congress, according to three people with knowledge of the matter. The move casts doubt on Louis DeJoy's future at the Postal Service. It potentially gives the panel two crucial votes to oust him, to oust him who can, of course, only be removed by the board. Surprise! Joining us now is Illinois Congressman Raja Krishnamurti. He's on the Oversight Committee that's been investigating DeJoy at, and his helming of the Postal Service. Congressman Krishnamurti has been calling uh, on the Postal Service Board of Governors to fire Mr. DeJoy for months now. He's also been calling on President Biden to replace members of the Postal Service Board, which President Biden did today, um, so that the new board could replace Mr. DeJoy. He also introduced a, a bill called the Delivering Envelopes Judiciously On Time Year-Round Act, which is as awkward as it sounds, except it spells out DeJoy. It's called the DeJoy Act to fix the things in the Postal Service that Louis DeJoy has deliberately broken. Congressman Krishnamurti, I really appreciate you being here. Thank you. Hey, thanks, Rachel. From the DeJoy Act to your involvement in the Oversight Committee's oversight of this matter to your direct pleas to President Biden to please replace members of the Board of Governors so that DeJoy 
can be gotten rid of. You've been really, really, really focused on this, perhaps more than anybody else in government. Did you know that President Biden was going to do what he did today? I didn't. Um, but, you know, my pleas really came from my constituents, Rachel. Uh, we've received more complaints, thousands of complaints about slower mail delivery and raised prices uh, than perhaps any other issue that we um, uh, talk about in government. And now we're on the verge of the holidays. And unfortunately, the Postmaster General is taking the joy out of the holidays, too. So it was time to call for his removal. And uh, once Mr. Bloom refused my plea to remove Mr. DeJoy, I asked that the president also remove Mr. Bloom, who's the chair of the Board of Governors, which he announced today. What sort of timeline do you think that people should expect here? As you say, your constituents have been giving you more feedback on this than, than <laughs> any other issue. A lot of Americans, people who run small businesses, people who just use the mail for normal bill paying and correspondence, a lot of Americans, millions of Americans, have been really mad about how bad the Postal Service has been under his leadership. And it is apparently all by design. It is what he has set out to do and what he's done. Um, if you can speak directly to Americans right now who have been mad about this or have been hurting about this, what would you expect in terms of the timeline for getting rid of him and, charting and starting the process of undoing some of what he's done? Well, first of all, I think it's not going to necessarily be done before the holidays because I think that Mr. Bloom has until the end of the year to complete his term. And so, uh, you know, I hope that everybody sends their uh, holiday cards and packages early this year because, unfortunately, even first-class mail is slow by 30% at this point. However, in the new year, I'm hoping that a the new uh, chair of the Board of Governors conducts a vote with regard to Mr. DeJoy and relieves him of his duties. Um, and so I'm very hopeful that happens sooner rather than later in the new year. Illinois Congressman Rajna, Raja Krishnamurthy, um, again, who has been uh, sort of playing point on this issue about Louis DeJoy, left over from the Trump years, still helming the Postal Service, doing a job that is infuriating and, and, and inconveniencing millions of Americans of every stripe. Um, now looks like he may be on his way out, something the congressman has been calling for. Uh, sir, it's been a huge day today. Thanks for helping us, um, helping us talk about it and understand at the end of this long day. Thank you, Rachel. 